why we have chosen lean? I'm sure all the speakers earlier have covered uh, a lot of good insights about lean and what we can uh, achieve with lean and the difficulties we face with lean. I think what I'm bringing to the table today is fresh from the pot. We are doing it as we speak. And trust me, it's fun. I wouldn't say hard, it is fun. So uh, why are we choosing lean? The company is 43 years old. It has been there uh, for a long time. It was the only provider. So it had different decades of different, uh, I would say, guaranteed business. So things were given, things were easy. And with the time, the challenges started to come to the market. Addressing those challenges was not so easy because everybody is happy. It's been confined between three graveyards and a mountain, far away from everything else. So why bother? It was simple, life is still the same. Reality today is different. Just for flour, Oman gets four times what it requires from flour, whether produced internally or imported. So that makes it difficult when you are a 100% supplier. You still have to maintain that. Today we are still 60% supply of flour to the business in Oman. Um, so again, this status quo has to move. We have to change that. Look at past problems and ask how can we do things differently. And I think most of you would agree that asking those people who would spend 30 years, 20 years plus in the organization, uh, the answer is simple. We're fine. <laughs> what are you talking about? Become agile and cost competitive in challenging market conditions. Just to, to implant that seed into the minds of those mid-level, the executors, by itself, you have first to show them the magnitude of the challenge in the market. You don't expect them to be you know, the gurus of Excel sheets and you show them the balance sheet and you tell them this is that and this is happening this way. That won't work. So you have to find your way to get them to that. In a nutshell, we had to shake the, uh, we had to rock the boat. So we had to look at the business case, see what we need before talking to people. SSA is, is our strong partner in that. But in the beginning, you need to look at what do you need from Lean in your business case. Improve delivery performance. On phase two, we had to identify the high potential projects. They are not the low-hanging fruits. They are the high potential. They, these things are the ones that will change your shape. These days, people go to do these cosmetic surgeries. They change the entire nose, which is a big, uh, a big thing in your face. So we had to change something big and focus on it. But you can't just do it overnight. Not to ignore the low-hanging fruits and things that are there that you discover in the way. So things had to go in parallel. Some of the low-hanging fruits we could easily fix through our ERP. You'll see later on that we are in parallel doing the ERP now, and we are kind of making the gain happening in the ERP system from the low-hanging fruits that we are discovering as we go on. On the third phase is implementing projects. We needed to be careful on selecting the people who would sit on those project teams and engaging them. I had uh, a session of debate on the readiness of the team. So either we would wait until we have them all ready or we give them that extra dose of readiness, which then had to be taken care of carefully by us. So we had to put that effort of putting them in in, 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 a, in a different environment. We brought them here quite a few times. We had to give that dose of emotional push along with encouragement to bring in their expertise into the table and not to shy out any fact. Uh, on phase four is uh, capturing cost uh, savings and continuous improvement. This is natural. Uh, you've done all that work, so you need to harvest and then see how you improve every year, how, how, how your product is going to come, how your lean is going to benefit you as you move on. From that, 
we needed to be assured of where is our focus area. What are we focusing on here? We are taking all these people into a journey. And, and, and we have to be crystal clear in front of our board and in front of the employees of the organization. So cost drivers across PNL, fixed and uh, variable, fixed pain areas. And this word has been there more than three times today. That's the pain. You're not doing it unless you have pain. You don't go to the doctor unless you have pain. You don't seek medications unless you have pain. Sometimes you are sick, but you don't have pain, so you don't seek medication. You still can, can move on. But today, the pain is there from a market competitiveness side and also from the challenges related to the cost of inventory. Build a culture to challenge the status quo. And that's, that's back to it. We want people to believe that the change is happening, the change is coming. We don't want to force the change. We want you to help us lead the change. We don't want them to manage it because we have to manage the change. We want them to lead it, to be a leader, each one in his own role at his project. So we had those workshops that I spoke about, and uh, SSA gave us really a good, a good guidance in, in, in talking to the team. Uh, uh, classically, we had the value stream because we had to deep dive into each and every aspect of the business where we really could identify those uh, very high potential uh, savings, very high potential improvements, enhancements, hence uh, our competitiveness will be there. We are expecting somewhere around the 700,000 savings, but uh, it could be more, far more. And I think from your experience, you will know that it is doable. This is a sample of, uh, of, our, of our projects, just like the Oman Post. Uh, streamlined delivery process and reduction in uh, loading and material handling charges. <coughs> because of the place where we have the feed mill, and this is, I'll tap straight into that because it will give you how easy it is sometimes with lean to discover uh, a good, a good, uh, good low-hanging fruit. The delivery from the invoice stage when a customer places that into the collection was 15 hours. We discovered that we can make it in thir three and a half hours. In the flour mill, we are doing so good just because of the place of it, the location of it, the access rights for the trucks. Uh, the, 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 there it's only a half an hour saving that we could do by just uh, accelerating a few, a few things. That was all achieved after some activities being taken whereby uh, we looked at the detailed activities, the value add and the non-value add, waiting time, delay contributors. The Gimba walk, which is a walk that you go through the process from its start to the end. All our Gimba walks are led by the CEO and the executive members of the organization. And that's because we want all the organization, the employees, to see that we are serious about it. It means to us, it means to the success of the organization. Rigorous diagnostic stage uh, and project selection. If you don't do this in the beginning, if you are not thorough, if you are not lifting every single uh, you know, door in there and opening it up, don't just walk and, and keep a closed eye about a few things, even if they are irritating, even if they are dusty. Just go there. Be as rigorous as you can. Go deep. Company-wide employee engagement and participation, and I would put two lines under participation. They need to feel that they are part of it. So for us to do it with the company that has different levels from forklift operators to you know, millers and head millers, we had to come up with something to have this participation in there. So we initiated a game whereby we didn't give the entire story, but we said there is this program that will help us harvest or make, make the company better. So there was a competition for the name, actually. This Hassad, the harvest. It's a competition that went through the company, and there was a question before that is, what do you know about lean and what could lean do for us? 
So we encourage the entire organization to look at it. And you will be surprised the amount of you know, feedback and paperwork that came through to the head office just about what people are thinking of. And the competition went on and we had a winner. And it was a celebration. So that participation part, we ticked the box for it. So identify quick wins, low-hanging fruits. They were so clear, they manifested themselves from the first round. And we could see more hidden. And, and, and they got, got themselves manifested after we had more brains from the management and the, and the execution teams. They, they, they had they'd been more engaged. So they helped us clear some of the dust about the jewels inside. Bring in hard savings first, but don't lose sight of soft savings. When I see hard saving, I see the dollar sign, you know, I will run to it. And sometimes I close an eye or two like, you know, let's just focus on getting there. But then you will demolish a very soft saving that is for the long run much better for you. So keep it in parallel, keep the balance, it's not easy. It's easy for me to stand here and say this, but it is not easy to, to keep an eye on the soft side. Commit to the long term and build capability. This commitment goes all the way through to the board. For Haytham, he has to defend lean, even though the results are not crystal clear yet. And the board has to support lean. So that only comes when you believe in it. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you very much.